am my intimate energy element I am an entity walking ahead of the pack I really am out of my head and it's evident that I will never be able to ever quit Melanin fellow with hell of a relevance Letters and elegant metaphors ready to set it off Dead on your petty your levels I'm ready and able to murder endurance He's all in the pieces and murking and berries He's on me measly crumbs Chill, it easily comes Like breathing from deep in the sea to your lungs I creep to the beat of a drum That's unique to me as I keep it a hundred Leaving through regions and leaving the dumb And feeble MCs sinking deep in the mud, the mud. Well, Hello Lassa. This is Thomas Hendricks from Hendrix Position. I'm calling you about your old apartment. Oh yeah, I already got the deposit back. This isn't about this, sir, nor about the big whiteboard with a stick figure called Ben drawn on it. I'm afraid this is a little more serious. Please tell me that I had any outstanding payments. I tried to make sure that everything was in order when we moved out. Nothing of the sort, sir. I'm calling because it's required by law for me to inform former tenants when something of this sort takes place. Your neighbor hadn't been paying his rent for a month, nor was he reacting to any of the invoices we sent him, so we went to go check up on him. I'm afraid I have to inform you that he was found dead in his apartment, sir. Jesus, really? He was a really nice guy, that's... that's terrible! Indeed, sir. It gets worse, however, as it was evident that he had been murdered. I cannot disclose too much information about how, but it is evident there was a case of foul play. Oh my god! And another thing, when cleaning out your apartment, you stated you had no knowledge of an attic space, is this true? So yeah, this is, uh, this is my whole place. <laughs> We're moving, motherfuckers! Jesus Christ, look at all this shit. Like, it's so, and by the way, this thing, apparently I have, a, like, an attic that I could just have freely used. I never knew this. Yeah, I, I, I never knew I had it. Why? We examined the attic just to make sure, and found signs of someone living there. Tell me, sir, have you been missing a blanket, a bonsai tree, various food items, and clothes? I have, actually, yeah. Then our suspicions were correct, and you've escaped serious danger, sir. We found these items in your attic. It would seem like whoever killed your neighbor is the same guy you called us about, and he's been living in your attic. Wait, wait, wait hold on, hold on. You mean to tell me he's been living in my place without me knowing this entire time? I'm afraid so, sir. I don't know what he was after, but he's gone now. Gone where? I'm afraid we don't know that, sir. He could literally be anywhere. stupid and if you like it you're a stupid poopy head no not really seriously if you like kingdom hearts that's perfectly fine i know a lot of people who likes kingdom hearts some who even have kingdom hearts tattoos and you know what you do you here's my take on it though and that is that as a video game it's eh it's passable kinda sorta but as a cohesive narrative, it is, no hyperbole, arguably the worst thing I have ever seen in my entire fucking life. So let's break it down. Let's say you have never heard of Kingdom Hearts and you're able to watch this video here to completion. Where are your friends now? 
Kingdom Hearts is a crossover video game owned by Disney and developed by Square Enix and is the brainchild of Shinji Hashimoto and this cunt. The game follows the character Sora as he putzes around various Disney worlds to find various things of varying importance to save his friends, ranging from locking magical doors so evil forces can invade the world any further to stubbing Maleficent and Pete that are out looking for real estate for no real plot relevant reasons other than to pad out the game. Oh yeah, there will be a lot of hyperbolic stuff in this video and I'm probably also going to be spoiling the first game just so you know. The game story is all over the place and most people just like the game because they want to see their favorite Disney characters pop up again. It has that nostalgic feeling to it that really plays on your childlike glee of seeing your favorite Disney character pop up in a setting they're usually not in. The problem is however that this is an easy reaction. Like this shit is up there with showing a puppy learning how to walk while playing sad piano music. There's no substance in it. It's like, oh shit, Darth Vader popped up in Rogue One. I know Darth Vader, awesome. Or. Oh, is that Tracer in Ready Player One? I know Tracer, holy shit! Like, yeah, woohoo, you saw something you recognized. It's just a cheap way of playing to your emotions. Like Android 16 in Dragon Ball, giving this long heartfelt speech to Gohan before he gets crushed so that he can send Gohan over the edge. Like who the fuck were you? You were an evil killer android who had no relation to this dude, but we needed something emotional. So talk about life and the soul or birds or whatever the fuck while some dude plays a sad piano song somewhere and suddenly this is drama. Let me prove a point. What happened? It said that someone shot me in the back with a shotgun, but there was no one behind me. Great game, Sledgehammer. Oh no, I hit him three times and then he gets a melee. Complete trash. I hit him four times and then he gets a random shotgun. Dude, this game sucks. Four hits, he gets one random shotgun blast and kills me. So, let's talk about the story of Kingdom Hearts for a spell here. And trust me, I'm making a point. I'm not just shitting on Kingdom Hearts for no good reason here. The story of Kingdom Hearts is as follows. Chronologically, it goes Kingdom Hearts X for the iOS, then Birth by Sleep, which was originally a PSP game, but if you play the PS3 game, you get just a fraction more of the lore. Then comes Kingdom Hearts, which was a PS2 game originally, then Chain of Memories, which was a Game Boy Advance game, then 358 in 2 days, which was a DS game, then Kingdom Hearts 2, which is back on the PS2 again, then back on the DS for Kingdom Hearts Coded. Then Dream Drop Distance on the 3DS. Then there's a snippet the PS3 part of Breath by Sleep only has. And now we're on to Kingdom Hearts 3 which is gonna come out soon on the current gen consoles. And no, this is not the order the games came out in either. If you think this is convoluted and stupid and impossible to follow, not only are you right, but you're not even prepared, cause let me tell you about the bullshit that is the big plot twist in Kingdom Hearts 1. Basically, you find your way up a tower to confront the big evil dude, and after you beat what you think is the big evil dude, another big evil dude comes in and is like, Maha! It was I! Ansem! And everyone, including Jiminy Cricket, are going, oh no, not... You? And if you're like me, you're sitting there going, who the fuck are you? But wanting to give the game its fair share, I look it up, cause I'm a nice guy like that, and to find out what this fuckhead is, and what his importance is, you have to walk around the various areas you go to, use the abysmal moving controls to navigate far, far, far off the beaten path, basically bang your face against everything in hopes that there's no invisible walls here, or breakable surfaces, which there more often than not are, and then you find some journal entries. These journal entries are given about as much attention in the game when presented as you using magic. You then bring up your start menu, then go into Jiminy's journal, go into Ansem's report, and then read the journal entries. 
Now, this might not seem like that big a deal, but you know what's a far better way of conveying your plot vital information? How about you don't make it an optional collectible in your fucking game and fucking give the information to us? I can't believe this shit keeps getting a pass. We've talked about this before. If you're gonna tell me a story, give me the story. Unless it's like Soma or Dark Souls where the knowledge has been lost to time, then give me the story where I can find the story. It's a fucking video game, it's not an ARG. You're not seeing Nick Nocturne make a video about Kingdom Hearts for fuck's sake. So why this long tirade on Kingdom Hearts? Well, today's comic is a fan comic based on Kingdom Hearts, which is more or less fan fiction with a budget itself. And boy, if you thought what I just brought up was stupid, convoluted, and not fought through at all, even the slightest, then let me introduce you guys to Disney Fan 01, the creator of the webcomic known as Faithful Hearts. Disney Fan is a 20 something year old lady who really loves Disney, and for good reasons too, don't get me wrong and has a dream of working for Disney as an animator. And you know what? Hats off to her. This right here actually looks pretty good. However, before she made this animation, she made Faithful Heart and... Well, it's sure something. She started out the comic June the 2nd, 2008 and put it on hiatus 24 days later. So, 24 days worth of webcomic. How much damage can you do with just 24 days worth of webcomic. If you're still with me after my little Kingdom Hearts hate speech, then let's go and find out. Meet Marina, a 30 something year old virgin who is sailing the Milky Way along with her romantic interest John Silver from Treasure Planet as they are attacked by the Nightmares and has to team up with all the various good guys from various Disney movies to fight back for the sake of lol I don't know and so that Marina can fuck John Silver and or Piccolo. Before we progress any further let me show you this screenshot and I want you to burn that into your brain so you don't forget it. This is a response Disney fan has when questioned whether or not she's played Kingdom Hearts and the part you need to remember is that this is loosely based on the games. Keyword being loosely. The problem with this is that this story makes it so it is paramount that you have played at least Kingdom Hearts 1 because it actively uses the plot from the game as a foundation. If you do not know what the story is in Kingdom Hearts 1, you will have no idea why the evil forces are gathering up princesses from various Disney worlds or stealing their hearts, which is integral to the characters and their motivation. Well, maybe not their motivation, because so much of the comic is focused on wanting to bang Marina. Trust me, the characters will disregard any and all drama if it means that they can hit on Marina a little. It's goddamn weird. So you read the story and you go, oh, okay, so it's a Kingdom Hearts fanfic. All right, I'll take whatever knowledge I have about Kingdom Hearts and apply it to this story. But then Disney fan is like, no, fuck off. This is my totally unique story. And instead she makes the Heartless into nightmares. There's literally no other difference than the name. Although Disney fan likes to say they're worlds apart because the nightmares are more violent. And one of them looks like the Grudge Kid. She says that despite no one ever attacks anyone in this comic, least of all the Nightmares. Also, the Nightmares doesn't mean anything. In Kingdom Hearts, the Heartless were at the very least things that didn't have a heart, which again is an integral part to the Faithful Heart story. The word heart is in the fucking title for fuck's sake! You could have been a video game. Could be sitting doing videos and Dragon Ball Fighters and Garden Sick Moolah, but no! I had to pick fucking webcomics! The writing is atrocious, but I will give it it's that really bad atrocious. You know, where you can sit down with some friends and just watch the train wreck happen? Apparently, Faithful Hearts was supposed to be a book, but was then made into a comic, but even then, the writing is just... It's just bad, man. 
Like this is like finding the black goo that be left after absolving a burned out husk of a corpse in acid. Put it on a table and then ask the coroner what was wrong. Like, I don't know where to even begin with this. Like, only a measly 20 pages into the thing, you quickly realize what comic you're dealing with as Marina and John's ship gets attacked by Captain Hook. And even if Hook catches every Disney character that was hiding on the ship, which are far more than you would expect, and kidnaps Marina, the main drama point isn't the capture of these characters. No, of course not. Cause this is basically like one of those mother romance books where all that really matters is that the girl is getting laid. You know, the ones with Fabio on the cover. Is that Fabio? <laughs> How does he do that thing with the shirt and the hair? It's not even windy over here. No, instead the entire plot centers around everyone wanting to fuck Marina, the most self-absorbed cunt the universe has ever seen. Like all her friends gets kidnapped by a hook and all she cares about is John Silver. Upon finding out John Silver is a bad guy, Marina flips her shit. It's like, how could you do this to me? Even if John basically admitted to being guilty of human trafficking and killing off his best friend, a thing he did because he chose Marina over him by the way, and then Marina slaps John when he's trying to explain himself, which makes John cried to, I shit you not, the lyrics of Backstreet Boys incomplete. <laughs> if the story is not about people wanting to get into Marina's niggas, it is about making Marina replace every and all Disney princesses ever. Maybe that's why you'll often see art where Marina is actively copying scenarios or poses from other Disney princesses. Like at one point Peter Pan shows up. Cause I guess he was just out flying all willy nilly in the vacuums of space. And he's giving Marina almost word for word the exact same line that he gives Wendy in the original story. Cause fuck Wendy and whatever special they might have shared. No, here's this new OC Mary Sue hotness. Time to get in on that. This story is a mess. It cannot decide whether it wants to rely on Kingdom Hearts or it wants to be its own thing. It can decide whether it will be a comic about fighting the evil forces or the nightmares or if it wants to be a self-fulfilling romance comic. It is a clusterfuck beyond compare that tries to use its Disney characters as crutches to keep it above water. It's terrible, but it's hilariously terrible. If you're new to coloring your work in, say, Photoshop, there's this thing that will almost always stand out and that's these white pixels here. I'm gonna give you a quick tip on how to color your work and not have these and make the coloring look 10 times better. First of all, you open your document, then you go to your layers and you duplicate the layer you got your line art on. Then go into the layer options, set the bad boy to multiply and now look what happens if you try and color. See? The line art doesn't disappear and your colors will reach all the way into, it's actually over, the line art, making it far prettier to look at as a result. You can even, which I guess is the thing Disney fan here has done, use your want tool on the area, then go up into select, modify and then click expand. Play around with it so the selection actually overlaps your line art and then hold down shift and press F5. Then after that, click enter and kablam so look at that. I'm sure there's an easier way of going about this, but this is what I did when I did art. Oh, and Disney fan is a fucking art thief, by the way. Everyone noticed by now, it shouldn't really come as a big shock that if there is a thing that I hate, it is art thieves. And you know, I actually feel kind of good about hating art thieves. Now, just for the record, let me just break this down once and for all. It is fine to trace something, if you disclose it and especially if you have the original artist's consent. It's also fine to use posters from pictures or use other people's art and pictures for reference. But again, you need to disclose the information that you've copied other people's work. The keyword being disclosed, and by that I don't mean not saying you've copied someone else's work till you're confronted about it. 
but rather get it out there immediately. If not, then you're still trying to reap in some props or even money for something you didn't do on your own. And just so everyone is on the same page, plagiarizing other people's intellectual property, in this case art, especially for monetary gain, is an actual, no hyperbole, crime. Might want to think about that certain furry artist who's had his art featured several times throughout both this season and the last season of the webcoming release. The next time you want to copy some other artist's work for the sake of saving time on a fucking art stream. You sad sack of shit. Whether or not money has actually changed hands with Disney Fan 01 here, I don't know, so I'm not gonna put that on her. But like I've said before, Disney Fan here did what every plagiarizing artist does when confronted with cold hard evidence which is lying through her teeth and hope people are too stupid to see through these blatant lies. Such as when confronted with tracing John Silver here, her response was, I never use reference for Silver. I've been drawing him for five years and never have to look at him in his movie. His anatomy is engraved in my memory. But if there is a character to draw whom I've never drawn before, I use reference, but I don't trace. I gave up on tracing back when I was 11. And it's funny she should mention this cause you know these pictures on screen here are just random images that people have happened to stumble upon. Like there's no relation to the quote just now cause as we can clearly see she hasn't referenced anything. Not even the slightest. Fuck you. Disney fan also has two other defenses. One is that she's a girl, trust me it will make sense later. And the other defense is that the stuff that she is tracing is Disney. You see, there is this thing, which is another reason why I tend to get ass blasted whenever I complain about Kingdom Hearts, which is that there's emotions involved, and often emotions overshadows logic. So if I say complain about Mickey Mouse talking about existential dread or mention how I want to suplex Donald Duck through a glass table cause this dumb motherfucker insists on using the strongest elixir I have in my fucking inventory if Sora as much as stops his fucking toe on something. <clears throat> People tend to defend that cause it's Mickey and Donald. These aren't just characters, they come with a lot of emotional bonds attached to them and it's hard to detach oneself from these emotions. It's the same reason why so many people find this clip here funny. Cause it's supposed to be Mickey Mouse, a character so innocent and dear to our heart, screaming in terror. Which is kinda what I feel Disney fan here likes to use to her advantage when confronted. Cause there is this air of, I just really like Disney, how can you take that away from me? Wipe to a lot of the dumb shit she says. Mix that in with being a woman and there are some first ass virgins on DeviantArt and then when she says stuff like the following here, people are very quick to come to her defenses. I am truly in tears right now. I was accused by a fellow Deviant, not naming any names, of most of my pictures being traced when they are really used with references. And now my heart is in a lot of pain and I'm not just saying that to get to all of you. Yes you are. My heart is really hurting. <laughs> I was even told that I would have been banned because of this false accusation. I don't want that to happen. This website has given me more friends than I ever had in real life. And now I lost one because of this. I can't lose anymore. I don't want to. Please. I need all the comfort I can get. I'm hurt bad. Shut the up. Also, if this isn't the most manipulative shit you've ever heard, I hate to be the one who has to tell you this, but you might want to think about what people are saying to you and how they are saying it to you. So what is there to say about Disney fans art? The problem is that in general Disney fan isn't a terrible artist per se. She knows just about enough about how to draw so that say when she copies this scene from The Little Mermaid she's competent enough to replace Ariel's fins with actual legs. And I guess I don't really have any proof that she's tracing or referencing the backgrounds, though she has admitted to trace screenshots or whatever the fuck, so maybe there are some of that going on. That being said, however, calling Disney fan a good artist would be like saying, boy howdy, Channel Awesome is doing great right now. Cause boy, even if, like, let's pretend she doesn't trace or copy or reference, 
Then she's got about as much consistency in her art as the Steven Universe artist does. Literally in the episode Pool Hopping, there is a montage of Steven and Garnet passing out pizzas and every shot, Steven is a different size. That's not on model, that's not stylistic choices, that's lazy. There really isn't much to say about Disney fans' art as, well, it's obvious to anyone with a set of eyes that this bullshit is stolen and not even done well. For a person who claims to have majored in animation and has the ego so big it could eclipse the fucking sun, Disney fan has incredibly little to show for it. Proportions change constantly, some shit just doesn't look right, Donald Duck looks like he starts house fires on the daily, the coloring is lazy, and I think she used the mother humping burn tool to do shadows. And let's not forget those awful, awful white pixels that shows up all the time. The best I can say, even if I don't want to, cause fuck her, she traces, but the best thing I can say about her art is that I sorta guess her only original character in all of this, Marina, isn't your typical foster clock of a self-insert OC visually. Trust me, we'll get into why this is only visually in a couple of seconds. But Marina does have an uh, easy, recognizable color palette, for better or for worse. It kinda keeps it like that all the way through. It does beg the question, why oh fucking why did she choose to wear high heels on a mother humping ship? And who in the right mind would wear a black belt with a string top and a long skirt? But at least it's not something like this. I can't! Someone made this! Lastly, I just want to return to that quote from Disney fan real fast where she said she'd never play Kingdom Hearts but then changed it to that she had. Boy howdy, your art sure does show a lot of visual traits from Kingdom Hearts, such as Donald's fucking staff or goofy shield and of the countless million screenshots you could have traced from of Donald and Goofy in various clothes, you decided to use the Kingdom Hearts clothing for them. The clothing that even fans of Nomura will say is bad Nomura design. Cause don't get me wrong, even a busted clug is right twice a day, and sometimes Nomura can whip out a cool design. I mean, his design of the Gormagala set in Monster Hunter is arguably one of my favorite sets ever. But this is the dude who decided this was a good design, and you figured it'd be a good idea to copy it. Like you couldn't even trace good stuff. You had to trace bad stuff. You're a terrible tracer. And I honestly don't know whether or not that's a good thing or not. Wow, is this gonna be short and sweet, cause just like with so... You're a cartoonist, there is one and only one character to speak of cause all of the other characters are just straight up stolen from Disney movies or cartoons with no single exception. So let's talk about Marina Seadrift and wouldn't you know it the person who has this name just happens to end up on a ship with Captain John Silver from Treasure Planet. I can't believe this is not common sense, I mean just... Don't fucking name your character after the role they're going to be playing later on in their life, for fuck's sake! Marina here is an obvious, obvious, obvious self-insert of Disney fan. And you might think I'm reaching, but just look at this piece that Disney fan made herself. That's her. That's Marina. That's how she sees herself. This is a self-insert. And it is probably the fucking first year self-insert I have ever seen. You know, next to Miles, obviously. Marina is basically only there cause Disney fan is so thirsty for John Silva and Piccolo for some reason that she needed a visual representation of herself so she could fuck them. I am dead, stone cold, serious. She even has drawings of Piccolo and John Silva fighting for her affection. I am telling you, this well runs deep and is very very wet and very very slimy. Also before we continue, I will gladly bash on a creator if I see that they have been stealing art from someone else, cause that's theft, you're a thief, fuck you. But if it during this entire segment seems like I'm actually bashing Disney fan, 
It is only because she is so interchangeably linked to Marina. So after Disney fan put herself in her own fictional universe so she could get some fat man bear pig and green cucumber dick, she decided to go along with it and ended up doing the mistake of making Marina a character. I think you guys should have witnessed enough of this comic to know that a person this loosely in touch with reality, trying to make a representation of herself, is a bad fucking move. Cause if Marina isn't the biggest Mary Sue that has crossed the movies of Disney, then I don't know what is. Everyone wants a piece of Marina, even Captain Hook of all people wants to get in there. But alas, Marina only wants this fat, lumbering, half android captain dude. To each their own, I guess. Whatever creams your Twinkie. I have made it no secret that I believe that Superman and Goku are, or at the very least started out as, massive Gary Stews. Maybe Goku was less so, cause his superpowers were more for the sake of comedy than for actual serious stuff. Still, in both cases, the creator eventually had to come in and be like, no, no, they totally have weaknesses, you guys. Like, uh, Superman is weak to this alien crystal that keeps popping up somehow, and Goku's dumb as a rock and grows weak if you grab his tail. Like, I'm just saying, when you actively have to go back to the drawing board to put a weakness on a dude, chances are you probably made a busty-ass Mary Sue or Gary Stu. I do hear they're better now, but I also believe that's cause they were given further flaws as the comics went on. Anyway, Marina suffers from the same thing. So many people called Disney fan out on Marina being too perfect that Disney fan had to come out and outright make a list of things that were wrong with her. And for the sake of hilarity, let's take a look at that list. She gets easily annoyed or embarrassed. I love how she puts in what I guess is exclusively a minor flaw, but then in the same sentence has her being embarrassed as an alternative. Which isn't necessarily a flaw, it's actually something a lot of people can find incredibly endearing. It's also not something she displays even a little throughout the entirety of the comic. She is a little naive. Again, love how it's a little. Like, this is another exclusively minor flaw, one that doesn't have a lot of positive sides to it. But even then, it's just a little. She is childish. How is this a flaw again? I'm kind of a grown ass adult and I'm doing a webcomic show on the internet and got video game tattoos and I never chalk this up as a bad thing. Heck, I'd say the moment you stop having anything childish about you, you are as boring as can be. Shy around most men, I guess it comes natural when you are a virgin. Again? <laughs> Not all of them. Can't have this be an actual flaw, so it's just some men. And this isn't something she shows off at all in the comic either. I also love the virgin part cause Disney fan apparently has this insane mindset about virginity cause at one moment she's so insistent of not having sex that even the act of studying breasts for the sake of art makes her queasy. And then the next she can't possibly stuff enough John Silver dick inside of her. And lastly we got my number one weakness is loneliness. How? Wh what? How is this? Your number one weakness is an emotional concept? Something you're not in control over whatsoever? This is like saying my number one weakness is that I eat ass. It means nothing. So for those of you at home who are keeping score, there was not a single solitary flaw during this entire thing. These are all flaws that you would say during a job interview, like, oh, I work too hard, and I suck at taking breaks, <laughs> like fuck. It is downright hilarious to see Disney fan missing the mark so bad on how to make a likable character, and that is because, and very evident, that this comic is not for you, it's for her. It's for her to realize some personal sex fantasy in which she wants to fuck John Silva and she wants everyone and their mother to fawn over her beauty and how perfect she is. It's a huge self-glorifying, self-indulgent piece for the sake of Disney fan to feel good about herself. And really, if it hadn't been for the abhorrent art theft, I'd not have touched this comic cause, you know, 
you do you. But then she had to go and steal other people's art. Some Disney, some other artist, and then the gloves come off. Like now it's open season for your bitch ass. So what can be said about Marina that hasn't already been said? Well, not a lot actually. You're trying to make me give an analysis of someone whose entire motivation is I want to get stuff like a turkey by a fat pirate. And not only that, but guess what? Disney fan has the same brain dead mindset as the writers of Les Lindas in which she actively states things such as Everyone should go after Marina no matter what. They all love her. Or Nothing bad is gonna happen to Marina. Marina will succeed. Like I don't know about you, but I'm not exactly feeling the peril when the protagonist is just like Yeah, I'm a bad bitch. You can't kill me. The writing is a two. It is one thing to make a self-indulgent comic, but just straight up stealing the story from Kingdom Hearts and only using it as a backdrop so you can get your free gun with someone is just bad. The art is a zero. As always, no points to cheaters and thieves. Instead, take a nice L and hold it. The characters are a two as well. You only got one character that is your own, maybe one and a half if you're generous, and they are the most shallow, boring, self-glorifying Mary Sue characters I have ever seen. All in all, the final reading experience for this comic was A2. It's trash. It is unapologetic trash. And it is god-awful trash. But it just so happens to be trash that is hilarious to look at in how bad it is. Don't read this comic unless you want to see how bad it gets. Disney fan of one, if you're watching this video, fuck you for stealing, you should be ashamed of yourself, but at the same time, I wish you all the best of luck in the future, because it seems like you put the tracing and referencing on the shelf, and you're doing animations right now, and it actually looks pretty sick. So, I wish you all the best of luck in the future, I hope you get into Disney and all that stuff that you're trying to do. If anyone thinks this video was particularly harsh, it is only because I want this to be a warning to everyone else who are currently tracing. I will find you, and I will gladly ridicule you in front of several thousand of subscribers. You are doing theft, you're stealing from other hardworking creators, fuck you. For the rest of you guys, I will see you guys in the next webcomic relief. Take care until next time. Cause it's in my veins That's where it runs I made a bad, 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 bad At least I know where I come from What a shit show. Anyway, so uh, there's a lot of stuff to talk about, so I'm just going to jump right into it. And I want to start out with the big one, which is that the charity stream is coming. We're going to be starting the stream the 14th of July, and then we're going to continue 24 hours from there on. There will be a video about this, but yeah. Uh, basically, it's going to work very much the same way as last year but uh, well last time 
But uh, if you have any suggestions or anything, you're more than welcome to mail me at riser@mail.com or add me on uh, on on the Discord. Uh, if you wanna uh, be an artist or think you can contribute in any sort of way, you can do so again uh, on the mail or in uh, the Discord. We will probably make an entire board just for just for the the, the charity. Uh, the theme is gonna be superheroes, so it's gonna be something like superhero, summer slam superheroes or something. Uh, so uh, if you have any ideas uh, for that further my way and then come the end of next week I'm gonna put out a video well at the beginning of next week I'm gonna put up a video where I you know announce it so if you have any suggestions uh, and we we like them we're gonna throw them in that thing so yeah uh, and again if you want to do uh, commissions and stuff for uh, for charity uh, again contact me but there will be more in the video to come next up there is uh, a thing that I know a lot of you guys constantly like because sometimes I'm very slow at at, at uploading and I'm sorry about that. Uh, and a lot of you guys uh, constantly wonder like, oh, what, what's what's Rice gonna cover next? And in case you guys wanna see what I'm gonna cover next, I actually found a solution together with Hugo, the amazing artist Dr. Ben Trail, who does my title cards. And if you want to get sneak peeks on what the next webcomic relief uh, is going to be about, you can join Hugo on his live streams where he is now going to be streaming when he does the title cards for the webcomic relief. So go there and subscribe to his channel uh, and I also think he is on Twitch. Uh, and that way you will get notified every time that he's streaming and you can get an insight on what the next webcoming relief episode is gonna be before everyone else. I also just want to thank uh, Hayden for his amazing uh, cameo in this. Uh, it, it's a fucking wonder how good this dude is in acting like holy crap. So if any of you guys want to check him out go and poke him on the discord. He has this name H Keefing. And uh, yeah, if any of you need an actor, I bet he would love it. And he's also a very, very great voice actor. Lastly, um, there is, uh, there's been some confusion, and I just want to clear it up once and for all. And that is that uh, who you're talking, uh, like who's talking right now, is me. I'm Lasse. Hi, I live in Denmark. Blah 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 blah. The one you saw in the show is Risa. Like Risa is the persona I put on when I do the webcomic relief. That's not me. Like that's not me who's talking now. That doing the live streams and stuff. That's that's Lesser, the one in the webcam relief. That's Riser. There's been a bunch of uh, misunderstandings that I like. The one you see in the show is 100% me, and that's not the case. Riser is an exaggerated persona of me. So I just wanted to clear that up. But without further ado, and thank you for bearing with me, uh, we're going to get right into the amazing Patreons who held back this uh, this episode of the webcomic relief and made it possible. So take it away. First of all, we got Neo. Neo doesn't have anything he wants me to push, so just know he's a real OG. Nicholas Knudsen. Nicholas wants me to push the YouTuber Frederick Knudsen, no relation, who I personally subscribe to too. The guy makes great documentary style videos on all sorts of internet oddities. Go check him out. Amosin. Amosin is working on a comic called Druids, which is a mature theme fantasy comic in the world of Warcraft. If you're interested in a more mature story from that world, go check it out. I'm a moron. I'm a Moron wants me to push his comic Doom Ones, which is a really meta Chosen One story with a twist. The link for it will be in the description. Alex doesn't have anything they want me to push yet, so just know they are the dopest, nicest person ever. Hitori the Artist Hitori wants me to push a fanfiction story he is writing. It's a porn story about Peach, who discovers and explores her exhibitionist's tendencies. This is an adult story for people 18 and up, so if that sounds like your thing and you're old enough, by all means, go check it out. Rojaru. 
Rojawa wants me to push his friend Steve Kessley, who is currently living in Japan, but is raising money to move to America. They sell animal pins, stickers of their design, and has or will open commissions for tattoos or just normal commissions. The link is in the description. The Bonsai Bonsai wants me to push his comic Kill the Sun. It's a story that takes place on a distant world where abandoned and colossal machines roam and terrorize the surface. An orphan child must overcome her inner demons to save a town from impending doom in an adventure that combines elements of both fantasy, mythology, and cyberpunk. Shane Asher Shane is working on a webcomic called The Strays. This comic tickles a personal fancy of mine, which is a superhero comic with anthropomorphic characters. It's a comic with a lot of charm, so check it out. Nana Newcom Nana has rebooted her comic Blackbird Miss Murder. If you want more adult theme and really thought-provoking superhero comics, Nana has you covered. Kathy Catlin Max Sovereign has a comfortably average life planned out until his engagement implodes. Angry and disillusioned, he quits graduate school and moves away to start over. Ironically, he finds someone from his past who he thought he'd never see again. While rebuilding their relationship, Max joins a band on a whim and begins chasing fame and fortune. In 2040's Denver, however, Max and his new friends face more than the usual sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Nate Tunes Nate wants me to push his friend's Twitch channel, as they are currently working on a fighting game called Super Psychic Royale, as both the artist and animator. So check it out! You guys know how I like fighting games, so I'm gonna be checking this one out. Samantha Shakespeare Samantha is doing commissions, and you know what? I actually personally really love their art, and so I'm gonna put a personal recommendation on this. They are well priced and well worth your money, so go check it out. And I also want to give a huge shout out to Henry Volt, Loria Kuhn, Sebastian Benbo, Jordan Berg, Sila Bauman, Stacey Pitt, Cage Raphael, Kawhi Lee, Shiv, and Driga of Adrian. And also a super huge thank you to all lovely people that you see on screen right now. If you want to support the show, change my life and make it so I can live off of YouTube and entertaining people forever, please go to my Patreon. Here you can donate anything you want every month and you get a ton of awesome rewards for it. Just go to www.patreon.com slash with 2 eyes You can also go to TeePublic and get your hands on some of the new webcomic relief merch. The link is in the description. And in case you didn't know, every time that you buy a shirt that is being designed by one of the awesome people in the webcomic community, you're also giving some money to the creator of that t-shirt print. And there's also both shirts, bags, uh, things for your phone, a bunch of stuff. So by all means go check it out and use this link because that means that the uh, creators get more money. If you don't want to support the show financially, at least think about liking the video, subscribing to the channel, or sharing your favorite webcomic relief episode with your friends. I'll see you guys at the next webcomic relief. Take care. Bye bye.